So I've been reading Nick Bostrom's book Super Intelligence recently and I, I aim to have a review of that in due course. I haven't quite finished the book uh, as of yet. But it's got me thinking about, his book talks about um, artificial intelligence, simulated intelligences if you like. But it got me thinking about simulated universes largely because that's something of course that he's very much associated with, with his simulation argument. And uh, something I'd never really considered before. Um, other than just in passing, which is exactly what the difference is between a simulated universe and a real universe. And if there really is any difference between the two, or any clear-cut difference between a simulated universe and a real universe, I think we have this idea. Um, sans his kind of simulation argument, we would say, well, clearly our universe, it's a, you know, this is a solid universe, this is a real universe. A simulated universe would be the kind of universe that we could make, or in fact we do in more rudimentary forms, the kind of universe that we make on our computers. And so that is the difference. So what is the difference between those two ideas? Well, I suppose that what you would say is the simulated universe that you have on your computer, the experiential level of that universe as a 3D world is not the way in which that universe is really encoded, right? It really is a series of, of binary numbers that, and it's only when it's kind of uh, fleshed out that it takes on that three-dimensional experiential form. You could think of something along the lines of the matrix there, the world in which they're actually experiencing is different to the physical reality. But the more I think about that, the more I th think that in actual fact it's not quite as clear cut as that because I just knocked on my disc as if that's physical, as if I'm experiencing my desk the way that it actually is. But we know, just just with simple sort of uh, physics uh, and chemistry, we know that that is not the case. In actual fact, that most of what we consider to be solid is, is actually mainly not really there at all. That actually 99.999% of what is there is just vacant, right? And it's very, very small nuclei with very, very small sort of probability cloud particles uh, circling around it in some kind of orbit. Uh, and that there's actually, it's what we're experiencing there is entirely different to the reality of what it is. And then we have ideas such as this idea we have now, uh, which is this concept of a holographic universe, which you might have heard about, and I'm probably going to garble now, or you might not have done, which is the idea that the way we experience the universe in three dimensions, that actually our universe is playing out on a two-dimensional surface. And that everything that we do, we're actually doing on a two-dimensional surface, but we are experiencing effectively a holographic representation of it. And so the three-dimensional reality that we experience is just, just an illusion. This new principle, this holographic principle, and what it said is that all the things that were falling inside a black hole were somehow captured in a preserved image at the horizon itself. So if the information is not lost, on the surface, the information is not lost inside because they are equivalent. All the information about those objects, what they were like in their three-dimensional existence, was preserved or encoded on the surface of the black hole. And that's a little bit like a hologram. Well, that suggests that maybe that idea may apply more broadly to the universe as a whole. Maybe the three-dimensional objects, us, everything in the world around us, maybe all of the information in these objects is carried, is smeared around a distant two-dimensional surface that surrounds us, and we're just, in some sense, a holographic projection of that distant data. The holographic principle tells us something quite astonishing. It says that our ideas of volume, of the, the, the real world, in a sense, might be a kind of illusion. So compare those illusions and tell me in what way is that world not simulated compared to the simulation that is on a computer. And then from there, it makes me think about the idea of a god, right? So it doesn't really matter whether you believe in a god or not, but take, take for example, the idea of an Abrahamic kind of a god who creates the world. And what does it mean from the conception of that god who is timeless and spaceless and... and uh, 
He creates the world that we have and in what way then is that world not a simulation? And what would it mean for him to create a simulation as opposed to creating a real world? What would in that sense be the difference between a simulated world and a real world given that they would both be experienced the same by inhabitants who live in that world and sentient agents within that world and given that clearly the way that we experience our universe is not the way the universe really is at least with regard to the molecular level and perhaps even more with these ideas that, that science that physics, new physics is contending of ideas such as a holographic universe and I'm not suggesting that that's the orthodoxy by the way a holographic universe isn't a sort of given but those these ideas are being entertained with in the world of physics and so it really kind of murks the boundary between what is a simulation and what is a real universe and I can't tell you what conclusions I've reached on this because really and truthfully the more I think about it the, the more murky it becomes so what I'm really interested to know is what anybody else thinks about this can you find a way of defining it that makes sense to us and actually provides a delineation between what would be a simulated universe and what would be a real universe okay well thank you for thinking bye for now